Let's take a look at audio and lip syncing. Please note that this tutorial was created on an iPad Pro using Animation Pro version 1. Your screens may look a little different. In Animation Pro, you can add one audio file to each frame of your animation. <coughs> Only one? What if I want to play two sounds at once? Well, you can also add one audio file to each of your figures for each frame. You might ask why it's done this way. Why is it done this way? Well, firstly, sound is generally the result of something happening in a frame or a figure doing something. So it makes sense for the sound to be associated with a frame or a figure. More importantly though, if sound was simply associated with a point in time, then the addition or removal of a frame prior to that point would require you to resynchronize things. By doing it this way, those sort of problems don't occur. Furthermore, any audio tied to a figure can also be made positional. In other words, it can be made to automatically pan from speaker to speaker as the figure moves around the screen. So let's start by taking a look at how audio is added to frames. Here's a really simple animation of a rock falling on a figure's head. Without any sound, it really lacks impact. Now the rock hits the figure's head on frame 4, so I'll add some sound to frame 4 for the impact. So I'll start by selecting, you guessed it, frame 4. Next I'll press the plus button at the top of the screen to open the add menu. And then I'll select audio to the frame. Animation Pro will open the file manager and show all of the audio files that I've created. In this case, I want to select a file from the large library of sound effects that come packaged with Animation Pro. So I'll select Animation Pro Audio. Now, I know there's a hammer sound in here that will work really well. So I'll select H to view all of the files starting with H. There it is. If I press the play button next to its name, I can preview it. That'll do nicely. So I'll tap on it to add it to my frame. Ah, that's much better already. Next, I'd like to add a suitable sound for the lump growing bigger on his head. The lump begins on frame 8, so I'll select that frame. Once again, I'll open the Add menu, select Audio to the frame, choose Animation Pro Audio, and then I'll locate the sound effect that I'm looking for. Here it is. So I'll add it to the frame. You'll notice that each time I add audio to a frame, a little speaker icon appears over its thumbnail on the film strip. These icons serve a number of purposes. First, you can see at a glance which frames have audio associated with them. Secondly, you can tap on the icons to view the waveform for the audio on the film strip. And finally, you can tap on the icon again to open the audio inspector. The Audio Inspector can be used to perform a number of adjustments to the audio on the frame. Let me run through it quickly. At the top, you'll see the name of the audio file, its duration in seconds, and the frames that it would span to play in its entirety. You can press the red minus button to remove the audio from the frame. The blue plus button may be pressed to select a different audio file from the file manager. The dial below that can be used to adjust the volume. Please note that as you move the dial, the waveform in the film strip will change accordingly. Next, you can use the plus and minus steppers to adjust the number of times the audio will repeat after its initial playback. You can also stop the audio on a given frame by dragging the slider or using the steppers as shown. Under the second tab of the audio inspector, you'll find dials for fading the audio in and fading the audio out. Oops, and I almost forgot. There's a couple of buttons at the bottom of the general tab to play the audio file and stop playback. Now in this case, the lump on the figure's head stops growing at frame 12, so I'll use the inspector to stop the audio at that frame. I'm pretty sure that if a rock fell on my head, I'd say ouch. 
So let's take a look at adding audio to the figure and lip syncing it. Let's start by selecting the frame where the rock hits. I'll then tap on the figure's anchor point to select it. Now there's a couple of ways that I can proceed from here. I can either open the Add menu and choose Audio to the selected figure, or I can open the Figure Inspector, select the Audio tab, and press the small blue plus button. Either way, you'll end up in the File Manager. Now there's a complete tutorial covering everything you might ever want to know about the File Manager, including recording audio. So I won't go over that in too much detail here. Ouch! What I will say though, is lip syncing won't work unless you turn on the lip sync option prior to selecting the audio file. Of course, on the off chance you do forget to do that, all is not lost. You can also go to the lip sync tab in the figure inspector and enable it there. This tab can also be useful for previewing the lip syncing at various frame rates. Ouch! Ouch! Now as with the audio inspector, the audio may be removed from the figure by pressing the small red minus button on either the lip sync tab or the audio tab of the figure inspector. Similarly, the small blue plus button may be used to select a different audio file. Whilst I'm here, I should also mention that the switch at the bottom of the audio tab may be used to make the audio positional. With the switch turned on, the sound will automatically pan as the figure moves around the frame. Finally, I should also mention that every time you add audio to a figure in a frame, a little balloon icon will appear above that frame in the film strip. If you hold your finger down on the icon, Animation Pro will indicate which figures in that frame have audio. If you then open the Figure Inspector Audio tab for that figure, the waveform will be displayed under the film strip. So let's wrap up this tutorial by taking a quick look at our animation. Ouch! I hope you found that as informative as I did. Thanks for watching.